Okay, today let's talk about photogametry. It's a way of doing 3D scanning using a single camera. And the image that you're looking at right now, all these strange blue boxes, those are representative of where I was standing when I was taking a picture of the original Robbie glove. And this is the uh, reconstructed one. We're going to get more into that in just a second. First, let's start by looking at the uh, Robbie glove and the one that was just printed. So, here's the uh, foam latex Robbie glove that I have that was pulled from a mold from the actual Robbie prop screen used. And most of the time you can't even tell until you look at certain pictures of uh, Robbie's end that there actually were little teeny air holes placed in the original glove for a little sweat ventilation on the glove and you can actually see it in some of the stills and in fact um, that Twilight Zone episode what was it the uh, brain center at Whipple's at the very end where they have Robbie there that image starts off with a close-up of Robbie's uh, right hand if I recall right real close because he's swinging a watch bob and you can see all of the uh, the dipples in it of course this would be Robbie's left hand and um, so basically I started by placing this uh, on a overcast day so I could get light outside without shadows and because I'm using the program 3DF Zephyr free it limits you to uploading only 50 images and um, some of the other programs will let you go as many as you want you know 100, 150 images and it seems like the more images the the better the final surface resolution is going to be uh, but the other programs won't run on my computer because you have to have a specific graphics card and a specific number of cores and blah blah blah. Anyway, the 3DF Zephyr Free would run on my computer, so I went ahead and shot those. And I'll take a look at uh, get show you a little bit of what that's about. I think I've got it open here. So all these little boxes are the pictures that I took from different angles shooting high, shooting low, shooting from the very top shooting from every direction you can you can think of and again you can't use a strobe you can't rotate the item that you're shooting because the program uses background information to line all of these images up so you take all those images and you put them into this program this is the 3D Zephyr free and uh, you go through a whole bunch of different steps is uh, it starts off by scanning the images that you put in the camera images you put in and if it can't use some of them it'll red flag them and say you know no good can't use and then you could replace that with another image you could if you'd taken extras and in my case this was my fourth attempt at taking pictures and, and running it through the program it accepted all 50 of the pictures that I had taken. And then it, it generates a sparse, dense cloud from that, which looks like pretty much nothing, just a bunch of dots. And then from that you go to the dense cloud, and from that you go to a mesh, and then finally you go to the filtered mesh where it starts looking like this. And along the way you do some cleanup by cutting out things like, see that little piece of crap there? You would remove that and little things in here where it didn't uh, decipher the the image right you would remove that but you can see it did pick up the uh, the pores and that kind of stuff in fact it even picked up see on the original Robbie glove if you've ever wondered what holds it in this little ring is on the outside of the wrist that the glove fits in but this is a metal ring and inside the rubber glove there's another matching metal ring and then there's little screws that screw the two together let's see if we can, here's a close up here and what happens is the glove is inserted through Robbie's wrist from the inside and pushed all the way up to those metal rings hit the very outside ring of the wrist and that's what locks the glove from not being able to be pushed out and into Robbie and the way that we know that this is a copy of the original Robbie glove and not the original mold of the glove in other words this is at least a second generation away and it could even be more than that. 
uh, is that when the glove would first been sculpted, they wouldn't have sculpted in the metal ring piece that was there. See, that would have been added after the foam latex part was uh, cast and made. So this shows that that ring was in place when this particular uh, hydrocal mold was formed that was used to make this latex rubber glove. So we know it's, it's at least a second generation or who knows how many away. So back to uh, what we have here. Let's see, what did I want to show you? Let's uh, pull back. You can see it from all angles. It, the scan didn't turn out too bad. So you go ahead and you do the cleanup and stuff. What else can we do in this that's kind of cool? Um, let's go to camera navigator. So here it's opened up a bunch of images down below and the one that's highlighted is the one we're looking at. And if I click on one, it's going to actually superimpose the photo camera right over the top of this regenerated uh, image, for example, like that. So now you can see the, the grass, the pedestal that I had it standing on, the angle, and how everything will match right in. So it did a pretty good job. It did that for um, all 50 of the images. And it, it doesn't, because there was only 50, I guess, or maybe it's because this isn't a professional application, you can pay money and get the professional version of this, which allows you to put in any number of pictures you want, or even put video in, and then it generates all this from video. You can do all kinds of things. Um, so here is the final piece. And I had to decide how much of this below what's seen, because this is the, from here on up is all that's normally seen in Robbie. This is all inside the wrist. Well, the whole glove ends up being taller than what I can print on my uh, Prusa printer. So I ended up cutting off some of this lower flashing down here to get it to fit, to get down. What did I finally get down to? I think I got down to about 210 millimeters or, or 209, something like that. But if you get much taller than that, then you can't you can't print it. And so even this in a press, impressive as it looks, it's still not perfect. It still should be better. And let me uh, tighten this down here. if we can get like the, the same angles of the hands and stuff. I have this sitting on the block because this I cut off, like I just said, a lot of whoa, this lower part just so I could fit it on my printer bed and print it as one piece. And of course you could print this in like, this is just PLA at like 5% or 10, I think it was 10% infill, very little. Uh, you could print it in vase mode and do it in hollow. You could print it in like Ninja Flex or something like that and make a flexible one. But you can see you've lost so much of the the, re the detail, the real sharpness of these ridges. The actual pores are kind of there as little mountains. It didn't it didn't capture all that, and that could just be because this is based off 50 pictures and not based off 150 pictures. I really don't know. But what this would be good for is if you were going to sculpt yourself an actual glove, you could 3D print this and you could have that in your in your hand as you're working on your model for your proper glove as a reference point. Because the, the everything that you need there for reference is there. It's just not as detailed as it should be. And the, the surface isn't as uh, smooth as it should be. It, it kind of kind of has extra lumps, less smoothness to it. If that's a term, see what I mean? Like go from like that to, to this. So as amazing as uh, the free version of this photo gametry is and it's able to capture the full-size glove, it's still uh, a long ways from being perfect. But I thought, well, what if we take this and scale this down to the size of what's used in the Walmart Robbie toy? 
then guys could replace the pictures of that. So let's uh, see if we can bring that up. I'm going to move the camera here in just a second as soon as I find the right files. And let's, uh, let's flip this around here. Okay. So, you're going to want to start by taking your Robbie apart. Take the four screws off the back of the body so you can pull the front of the body away. Then there's two screws that hold a retainer that hold these arm balls in place. Move those. Then you can lift the whole arm ball or assemblies out. If you're very careful, you'll find that you can pop the assemblies apart. See how there's two big main center pins? And then all along the edge, they have a little little tabs which they have actually put some glue on so if you wrap a rag around the, the arm and then start pinching it with pliers or everything you'll find that that glue snaps loose and then you can pry the two parts apart um, the left and the right are very different in the Warmont Robbie they they made the posts center post smaller on the that would be Robbie's left and this would be his right. They made the post fatter with a wider. Why they bothered to do that, I don't know, because you can stick the arms in either hole when you assemble the thing. But they did. So that meant when I took my 3D scan of Robbie's glove and I sliced the 3D scan of Robbie's glove right off at the bottom of the hand, I had to reproduce these two bottom pieces in uh, Design Spark Mechanical, which is the 3D CAD program I like to use, and then uh, join the two things together once they were scaled down. So here are Robbie's gloves as seen in film versus the toys. You know, the toy gloves on, on every toy robot you ever get is just, they're just garbage. They always make them long and really blocky. They, they weren't as long as they ever make them and they were never as blocky as they make them. So you can see this one arm here, I was able to split it apart without even taking it 100% apart. That way I could just fit the hand piece in there and snap it back together. This was the first one I did and I actually pulled it all the way apart. So here's a picture of the front of the body off. That means I took the four screws off the back, lifted the front away. This is this arm bar pressure piece. You take these two screws, you lift that out of the way, and then the two arms will come right out. And pictures of Robbie with his new gloves. I didn't have uh, matching paint to the plastic I just used what I had laying around. You can come back at any point later with a brush and, and paint them up or spray them or do whatever you want. And um, I think that's about all I want to cover here. I guess I'll put up on Thingiverse two different files. Maybe I'll do one that says something like uh, Robbie gloves for Walmart Robbie or something like that and then one that just says uh, the 3d scan of Robbie glove original or something like that anyway I'll have links in the description down below if it's something that interests you that you might want to uh, 3d print or just have on file for reference and who knows maybe someday I'll get a uh, computer that has the right video cards or I'll get uh, um, money enough to buy a... well I don't, can't see wasting my money on a better photogametry program. I would rather spend my money on a, a resin printer or something like that. But who knows, maybe someday someone will approach me that has a good 3D scanner and wants to do a better scan yet to pick up even more detail. You never know, it could be interesting to be able to have this locked in digital format for futures to come. Anyway, this is close because uh, a person could take this and easily sculpt out a very proper, smooth-looking one. Like I say, it's not, certainly not horrible. And it would get somebody real close. Oh, I, I did a version of this also because the bottom of this photogametry isn't perfectly round. Well, it's possible. It has something to do with the fact that this is latex and it's not perfectly round either, too. But anyway, I ended up uh, cutting it off here and just making this bead and the wrist piece in Design Spark Mechanical and then joining them together to make a more round base in case you were printing one of these in PLA if you wanted to be able to hook it onto your Robbie. With this one you'd only have one option to be to cut it off here and glue it or screw it on or 
you'd never really get that in there because it's not truly round as you can see so what I'm saying is I have a file that has it round I probably should put up a couple of files I'll put up the one that has it round and I'll put up the raw file from the program that has the full length and from that you could always cut off whatever you want in your own uh, editing programs